Hello friends, Cyberry here, with another Darkest Dungeon How to Use Guide. Uh, today's a little different, it's not Stratterday, it's not Saturday at all, um, and as the timing of this video itself should coincide with the release of the class I'm covering today. Uh, before I get to that, uh, thanks for tuning in, don't forget to hit the like button, share this with a friend uh, if you think they'll enjoy it, and uh, thanks everyone for your support, I really appreciate it. Um, if you would like to help support the channel more directly, you can visit patreon.com slash or just subscribe here on the channel and tune in. It helps massively. All right. Let's get down to business. Okay, I need to stop doing that. Uh, today, we are going to take a deep dive into how to play the Buried. Um, let's see. The Buried should be, unless some technical difficulties prevent me, released today uh, on the Steam page. We're going to breeze over the credits, and I'll try and be as brief as I can, because it's probably, uh, you know, it just delays the inevitable. Um, coding and writing and editing together her sprites were all me, Cyberry, but it couldn't have been done without existing visual assets. Um, stuff from the Shield Breaker, stuff from Skins of the Shield Breaker, stuff from uh, the regular Crusader, and stuff from the female Crusader class. Um, other than that, uh, Groovy Sweet helped me with some of the sprite assets, uh, fixing some of the sprites up a little bit in places, um, and the comic art in its entirety. Um, Red Die number 5, providing the free trinket and ability icons on Patreon. Uh, I couldn't have done this without those. Uh, they were great as a base. But those specific visual assets that people created that I want to thank, it's the Egyptian War Dancer's Shieldbreaker skin by Pol Janan, and the spine and sprite movement and overall look of the female crusader by Helen and M.O. This couldn't have been possible without all of them, so they're going to be in the credits here and on the Steam page. Uh, but let's get to her base stats and start analyzing that. Um, our max HP at opening resolve is 23. It progresses in a weird amount all the way up, um, but to a max of 50. Uh, 23 is average, and 50 is above average, bordering on pretty da pretty darn good. Uh, it's more than the Hellion gets at that level. It's a little lower than Man at Arms, if I recall. So um, at high level, she's got a decent chunk of HP, but at low level, it's a little more average, so her growth is strange. The dodge value um, is technically slightly above average. Um, she starts at an 8 and goes all the way up to a 28. This is below um, Hellion and Highwayman, all those people who have above average uh, by default. This is the same growth as the Shield Breaker. Um, it feels like enough for her. I don't think this is ever going to get buffed, but it may eventually one day get nerfed depending on what changes come. Um, her speed, we'll, we'll skip the prod. Her speed uh, starts at four at default, um, and it grows. It goes up at weird timings, just like, just like the Shield Breaker space speed actually. Um, but it's one lower. Uh, at Resolve one, it is a four. At Resolve two, it is a five. It jumps up to seven at Resolve three, and it stays there. And then at level five, it jumps up to eight finally. Um, this is above average, and it it's uh, it's barely above average at low level, and at high level, it's um, actually pretty good. If you're not nerfing it, or um, it's not being reduced by other means, which we might get into later. Uh, the accuracy mod is zero. That's pretty standard. Her crit is a four at opening resolve, and it progresses all the way up to an eight. This is, um, it's slightly above average as far as crits are concerned. This is the same crit growth value that the Bounty Hunter and the Highwayman have. Oh, not the Highwayman, um, the Houndmaster has. And the damage, uh, it's pretty standard for a frontliner, it's, it's pretty good. It's not as good as, say, the Crusader or the Hellion, but it'll go from a 5 to 10 at opening resolve to an 8 to 16 at final resolve. Um, and this is the same growth as the Bounty Hunter, but you're not getting bonus damage for Mark. 
So it, she gets bonus damage in similar situations at times, but uh, you'll find she puts out just enough damage um, as it is. If anything, this might get nerfed by a few. Uh, like one max on everything and one minimum base off a few levels. So let's just jump right into her combat skills. You'll notice they're all selected by default. And there is a bonus one down here because I didn't want to lower her tech of her other mode or her other, yeah, mode by uh, forcing this non-move into her moveset, but it needs to exist because otherwise her um, her animations and her mode change uh, freaks out. So, let's see. Let's start with the first one. Paranoid Strike. It is usable from the first or second rank, and you can target the first, second, or third rank of the opponent. This is a random target melee attack, so you will choose a target that is valid, and it will execute this attack on a random target that is valid. So where you want to hit is not where she hits. It's to symbolize that she doesn't always have control or she's always losing some degree of control over her faculties in that way. Um, the execution of this move moves you back one. It has an accuracy base 90 and a damage modifier of minus 15%. And what it does is it activates repost on yourself and you will stress yourself out for five stress and there's a 55% chance to give yourself the horror condition of two horror per round for three rounds. And this move behaves slightly differently um, depending on what mode you're in. Her default mode is sedated, so when you are sedated, she has a 30% chance to become lost. And when you are lost, which is the other mode, you have a 10% chance to become sedated again while using this move. This is usable in both, and it, the only change there is that it switches you and how often it switches you back to the other mode. The second ability is called Bitter Blade. It's usable from the first, second, or third rank, and it's usable to target any of the front two ranks on the opponent, uh, the opposing side. It's a melee attack, has an accuracy base of 90, a damage modifier of negative 20%, and a crit mod of plus 5%. It is armor piercing and causes blight at 100% base for one point a round for two rounds. This is short-lived for a blight, um, and it's not the most quantity-wise. It's it's there in existence just to cause blight. Uh, it's good for synergy teams if you have a grave robber, for instance, that wants to do extra damage to a blighted target. This is not a bad way to set that up, but her speed is a problem in that regard. Um, what else does it do? It's, it has a 30% chance to become lost when you use this move, and it has a 55% chance to activate horror on herself for two points a round for three rounds. Her third ability, called the Old Way, it is usable from the second and third rank, and it can target opponents in the second, third, or fourth rank. It's a melee attack with an accuracy base of 85, a damage modifier of negative 5%. This changes as she levels up. I believe the max is a plus 15%, so it's uh, comparable to uh, Wicked Slash, actually, in that way, at the top end. But it has a crit mod of 2%. I don't know if I left off there or not. And is a has a bonus 15% damage versus unholy. And that grows a little bit as she levels up. Um, I believe it maxes out somewhere around 50% bonus damage to unholy. Um, if sedated, so in that first mode, there's a 40% chance she becomes lost. Uh, and it will activate stress on herself. She'll stress her out, self out for five. The fourth ability is called hide from them. She moves herself forward with this move, um, and she heals herself for uh, zero or one heal. Now, all the way up through her line here, zero is the low option. 
but the but the high option will change a little bit up to I think a max of like three at high level. Is that right? Four. So she can get a heal off of this, a physical health heal, but she might not get a heal at all. So this could take you off death's door, but it won't guarantee that. Um, what it does is it will cover your stress, and at opening resolve, it'll recover your stress for seven. Um, it could activate a blight on you. Um, the chances are fairly high. Her blight resistance is high, but she, as she levels up, unless you do something about it, she retains a roughly 30 to 35% chance to blight herself with this. So keep that in mind when equipping her with quirks or trinkets in the future. And it will stealth you for two rounds. This is enough for one turn to retain that stealth, because at the end of the round you use it, that timer will tick down to one. So you will have one turn with stealth, and you will have a one turn bonus of plus 30% damage, and a one turn bonus of plus 4% crit. It will make her lethal beyond her normal means for that next move. So this is not a bad way. Um, these are the ones that are accessible to her first mode, sedated. Um, and then these are available in her second mode, lost, also with this one. This technically is available in lost mode. I find that it's not really that useful. We'll get to it uh, later. Her fifth ability is Feral Lunge. It is usable from the third or fourth rank on your side, and it will target any rank on the other side. And when I say any rank, I mean a random target melee of those four ranks. Uh, so you will choose this target, it will target who she damn well pleases. Um, as she moves forward two, with an accuracy base of 95, and a damage modifier of plus 35%, and a crit mod of plus six percent. This is a um, this is a showstopper right here. She can flat out kill people with this, one shotting them uh, fairly reasonably. Uh, it has armor piercing, so that's going to help you as well. You're basically going to wreck people with this. The problem is, um, you'll find with the other moves in this mode, she is constantly. Uh, Every other turn, at least, she is not able to use this, is the thing. Because the limitations of her only using this from the back, and her wanting to be in the front for other things, is going to keep you um, deciding whether you're going to try and uh, move back to activate this, or whether you're going to stay up front and do other things. Her sixth ability is Reeling Rake. It is usable only from the very front rank and it targets anybody in any rank on the opposing side. This is the only move that does uh, that, that has the intention of doing damage to try and get a kill in her second mode that does not hit a random target. Her accuracy base with this attack is 85, it's a little lower than her normal. Uh, her damage modifier is negative 40%, and her crit bonus is just a serviceable plus one. This is a free action, so you do this, she's going to activate this skill, and then you are going to get an immediate second action. That is important to mention because it's basically a way to get her back into her preferred second rank. But when you select it, it will uh, it has a 55% chance, the standard, to give her horror condition for two points a round for three rounds. That's on most of her moves. Uh, her seventh ability, her final actual ability, is called Otherworldly Whale. It is usable from rank two or three. It is only useful once per battle. I believe that extends to twice a battle at high level. Yeah. And it targets both the front first two ranks, rank one and rank two of the opponents. It is a ranged attack has an accuracy base of 90, a damage modifier of negative 90%, a crit mod of negative 5%. These are pretty standard uh, for moves that affect multiple party members on the other team. Uh, what it does is it has a 100% chance to stun those targets, doing a little bit of damage, and it will stress all of your heroes out like crazy. Just like the lunch. And our final actual 
combat skill is clarity. This is just when she's in her last mode and you have no control over like how she's acting. She's falling into that routine of um, self-defense mechanisms. This is how you get her back into her default mode. All it does is that it is not a free action use. It is a waste of her turn to do, but it will get her back to default where she can use her self-healing move, for one, um, and where she can start blighting people with armor and uh, activating repost, yada, yada, yada. So this is the safe play. If, if all of her moves are stressing the party out and you've got a guy at risk of heart attack, this is useful. Other than that, uh, let's select these off real quick. Let's get into her camping skills. Um, she has the normal encourage, wound care, and pep talk. So her first unique ability is Moment of Relief. It is a time cost 2 camping skill. You select a companion, and they will heal 20 stress. This might get um, increased to time cost 3 uh, as we patch up and balance this over the next probably a couple weeks. Hidden Stash. Um, this is her second unique camping skill. It is a time cost 1 ability. Uh, it targets herself. This missing one, I can't find out what is actually directing that. So if a coder can figure that out um, and give me a tip here, <laughs> I can fix this. But what it's supposed to say um, is it has a chance of producing laudanum out of nowhere, out of a hidden stash, or producing a random trinket. You have a chance of either one. I find she's more often to give laudanum. You can also get the uh, the lower level trinkets from the antiquarian. No, not trinkets. The um, the relics, the antiques from the the small ones from the antiquarian can pop into this as well. So it's a kind of unique ability that you can use twice every time you camp to kind of maybe get an edge up. But she's looking for laudanum because she's stressed as. Uh, her third ability is At Home in Darkness. It's a time cost 4 camping skill that prevents nighttime ambush and all her friends recover 10 stress. So she's conceivably going on watch so that her friends can sleep. And her final camping ability, The Teachings, is a time cost 3. You select a companion, they remove mortality debuffs, and they heal 10% of their HP. Um, this is a good way to get people off um, those mortality death store debuffs. It's not the best way, and it's a little bit expensive for how little it offers, but it's what she's got. Um, this symbolizes her uh, having knowledge in the ways of the light, and knowledge in the ways of the book she has stolen. Um, that instruct her about knowledge she shouldn't have, knowledge of the Eldritch, stuff like that. So that is all for her skills and stuff. Um, she has a crit effect uh, that buffs her dodge when she crits. Um, it is the normal generic de default dodge bonus uh, for the crit effect. She does have custom virtue and affliction, though. Every time she reaches 100 stress, she will get the same affliction. Uh, she will become shattered I think I got one that is actually still shattered, don't I? Yeah. She will become shattered. And shattered will reduce your HP and your speed. And it makes you very likely on your turn to uh, select a random command or to attack your friend and then get your turn. So she's a little unreliable. Uh, she's a little... Um, lost to her to her uh, trauma at that point and she desperately needs a hug but she can't be hugged in combat is what it what it basically boils down to um, but the bonuses you also get from this are you gain a little bit of damage boost actually it's a pretty sizable damage boost 25% uh, damage dealt in that mode and for the duration you are afflicted you take a little bit less stress damage each time you take stress damage so she's quick to reach 100 stress if you don't do anything about it. You don't necessarily want her to be up there, but it can help. 
Um, and once she is that stressed, she only slowly goes up from there. So that's kind of a nice uh, build for that stuff. As far as quirks go, what would I recommend on her? Um, dodge quirks are very good on her. Melee damage quirks are very good on her. Um, let's see, stress resistance quirks, uh, especially if you ha if you always run in the darkness, for example, give her a stress bonus in the darkness. If you run in the light, give her the one in the light. That kind of thing. Or um, if you can get Let's see if you can get prismatic calm to last on her it's actually really good uh, warrior of light is also good on her I wouldn't necessarily lock it but maybe maybe um, but also if you have a uh, bonus to stress healing through certain means if you always use a Chester and musical happens to land on her uh, bonus points uh, I would lock that in this case because stress ramping is going to be her main uh, bane of her existence Let's see, um, trinkets to recommend. I'm actually going to look through her trinkets real quick here, uh, see what stands out to me right now. Um, I have some equipped on her, so they're not all here. Uh, the first one, let's see, she has a buried only trinket that does 10 accuracy, plus 10% damage, plus 10% damage versus the Eldritch, and a plus 5% crit versus Eldritch. And it has the cost of 10 stress. This one's alright, and paired with the book, which does plus 3 speed, gives you a plus 10% death blow resistance, and 50% damage reflection. Um, that one might get nerfed a little bit, but probably won't. Um, and it, at the cost of minus 10% max HP and minus 10 to her dodge. But together, they have the uh, set bonus of an additional plus 10% damage and an additional 6% crit that doesn't depend on being Eldritch. So this makes her pretty lethal, uh, but it changes her gameplay a bit. It makes her so that she's not focused on dodging. You kind of want her to get hit so that you can give that damage reflection and the repost that you're probably setting up on this kind of build. Um, this is not how I typically go, because I don't like her to get hit that much. I'm very protective of my dear baby here. Um, but yeah. Uh, the next one I have on this list here is the Shroud of the Lost. It is her very rare trinket. Um, it gives you a bonus 35% damage while stealthed, which she can activate for one turn on herself, so that's not bad. Uh, a bonus 10% crit while stealthed, which actually is probably more of a factor on that one turn um, at the cost of 8 dodge and the bonus here is when you attack you have a 25% chance to reactivate stealth on yourself for it says two rounds but that's technically only gonna last one round because when you activate it it is your turn and then it flips over to a one uh, the one I most often put on her mother's keepsake is it's a rare trinket 15% damage, plus 10% dodge, at the cost of 2 speed, and 15% of her max HP. This will drop her max HP from, like, man-at-arms levels down to, uh, at least lower than the Hellion, I believe. So this, um, it's sizable. This probably won't get nerfed. I feel like it's balanced, but I could be way off my gourd here. The point is, as we get lower into these, uh, they're not gonna get much worse and that the point to that is I wanted the trinkets to symbolize a way to play her differently or, or prioritize certain moves or concepts uh, for how to play her. But this one, the uh, first of her uncommons is Blasphemous Orders. It does a bonus 20% damage versus Blighted Foes. It adds 8 to her dodge and 8 to her accuracy at the cost of only 10 stress. So that's pretty dope. And her final trinket, the last uncommon, oh, not final, because there's one that's equipped on her I need to go over, um, is a minus 15% stress. It adds 10% to a prot at the cost of 10% damage. So, let's put our uh, team in order here. Uh, we got one, okay, cool. Well, we're going to run into a, we're low level, right? 
She's not, but this should work out fine. Um, this is the trinket I wanted to go over. This one might get rebalanced. Um, but it's a crystalline trinket. It's got a cost of, I think, 50 or something like that by default. But it'll add 15% to your blight skill chance, 40% to your blight skill amount. If you have laudanum in your party, these next few lines apply. Let's go over those. If you have laudanum in your party, she will ignore stealth when targeting foes. And she will get a bonus 15% death blow resist, which brings her default up to the max. And if that laudanum is in your party, she will have a bonus 10% crit. What'll most likely be nerfed if it does is this crit will go down, the death blow might go down, and she will probably accrue another negative uh, in addition to the negative that they have here of minus 20% stun skill chance. So basically, if you're counting on using over Otherworldly Whale to stun people, uh, maybe not so much with this build. Maybe not so much. But I run her often with this. Um, uh, the other option is the set bonus. Um, you, if you're planning on taking advantage of this for stealth purposes and for damage purposes, you can jump in and uh, add the Shroud of the Lost to your set. A lot of different ways to use her, and you can kind of start her in almost any slot, but if you're going to run her uh, with the intention of stealthing and then attacking, I would prioritize putting her in either rank 3 or rank 4 to start. The fiends must be driven back. And what better place to begin than the seat of our noble line? Alright, let's do this. I'm gonna go grab this fight right here, and then I'm going to... Oh no, I'm gonna continue going that way, son of a bitch. I gotta keep in mind that I have to explore this. <laughs> so, here goes. No. Let's see if I can get this um, support act to level up into headline act. That might be helpful. Oh shit, you don't have the right moves on. Well, let's set up a regen anyway. The wounds of war can be healed, but never hidden. Oh, she's crazy. Don't do it. Oh, God. Okay, it's fine. This is fine. All right. Uh, well, you're gonna get a kill if I go this way. Obliterated. That crit really did something. Now, with that crit bonus of 10 for 10, that puts her resolve for dodge with this equipment brain. up to 62. Um, that's a little, um, at Resolve 4, that's high. Uh, at Resolve 5, that's good enough to evade, I don't know, like 25-ish percent of incoming attacks. So it's not weird, it's just, it's a little early for her to reach that 60 cap, but she needs the crit effect to get there. As the fiend falls, a faint hope blossoms. 11 stress. Let's, let's, let's de stress you a little bit. Alright, uh, here's the feral lunge. It should, uh, it should one shot this, this guy. Pretty, yeah. Um, yeah. And the crit bonus right now is insane. Annihilate. But a victory nonetheless. Alright. Uh, let's shuffle these guys around, and then I gotta. Come on now. Then I gotta remember to switch her move out. We'll come back and loot that later. Even we gotta come back anyway. Stone seems bent on preventing passage. Alright. 
I'm gonna start off with the stealth with her this time. Um, it might extend this combat more than it needs to be, but we'll show off her other moves, I suppose. Well, you know what? I won't extend the combat at all. Here's another turn. Oh no. Don't hurt anybody. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. If you want to be up front, that's fine. It's cool. I'll roll with it. I didn't do the stealth like I thought I was going to. Son of a bitch. So I better do it here. Problem is, doing it after is gonna move her forward again. No! Don't. Don't, don't hurt your friends, man. That's not, that's not cool. I don't have a great healer for that. Hey now. Hey now, that's not very nice of you. Well, let's use this move. Get a little bit of regen heal going on. 2 HP is not going to do much for, for them. Okay, I've got repost on everybody right now. Just everybody hit back, please. Son of a bitch. You need to die. That's not how we do it. That's not how we do it. But that was her one chance at the stealth. All her uh, bonus damage stuff is gone. Well, shit. Continue the onslaught. Destroy them. I don't usually like to leap forward with her, but we're doing it. We're doing it. Huh. More healing, please. More healing, please. I could really use that healing. Oh no, you're, you're doing it again. Okay, random turn. Not bad. Not bad. Okay. Now, in this video, she hasn't ended combat in, uh, in the second mode and needed to switch yet. So maybe, hopefully, at the end of this next fight, that'll happen. Hey, another scouting. Because in combat, you won't be able to really tell when she's lucid and when she's not. Uh, but... If she was freaking out and the battle ends, you will be able to tell if she had to recover. So you won't notice a difference until you see her turn pop up and a different moveset is on there than you expected. Alright. Didn't really work well last, last fight. Let's try it again. Oh! You said headline act, does that mean you're, uh, nope, nope, that's just a line. Okay, that's fine. Decimated. That crit was needed. Yeah! Is broken. Maintain the offense. That's what I thought. Okay. Um, you could reuse a little bit of stress recovery. Cut it out. Nice. Nice, 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 nice. That doesn't work every day. 
Well, well, shit. Let's move you. Oh, you don't want to. Okay, <laughs> that's fine. It's cool. My bad. My bad, dog. All right, she's not yet in that mode. We'll see if we can trigger that. This is a higher chance of switching, but it didn't look like it did. Easiest way to tell if she's switching modes is to watch the icons, because there's no transition, because she doesn't change any uh, sprite or stance. Maybe in the future, I might patch the combat sprites and stuff to be wholly different, but I'd have to work with an artist on that, and uh, that just didn't happen this time around. I was creating it in a vacuum and didn't really know much about the community and didn't try and organize this with anybody really, so in the future, that'll probably change. Technically a kill. Alright. Well, that is the standard three combats. Um, so that's really all I'm gonna spend time on this today. I've got a lot of work to get the uh, Steam page up and going, so I bid you adieu here. Uh, remember to leave a like uh, or a comment if you feel like it. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you want to keep seeing these guide videos, or if you want to keep up on whatever's going on with me and my modding, fledgling existence. Uh, if you want to, check me out on Patreon. Uh, but otherwise, let's see. Next week we're going back to normal. None of this four video nonsense that I can't possibly keep pace with. Um, so we'll go back to a uh, Let's Play on Wednesday and then a Stratterday video f uh, with another guide. So, thanks for watching. Stay frosty. God!